Well, the deck is all sanded down now. The second coat is sanded down. Uh, I did something just a little bit different for this last final coat. I sanded everything with 220 grit. Uh, we are taped off. It's hard to tell. Focus, baby. There we go. So we're taped off right below the plywood subdeck line. All the way around the shear. We're sanded down to that all the way around the boat. Same thing back here. I taped off down below the quarter inch plywood sub deck and sanded to that line. The interior of the cockpit edges are all sanded. Same on the rear cockpit, taped off in the same place and sanded. Uh, we're taped off on the rear of the boat, right below our little filler piece and sanded down to that line. And then inside the motor well, same thing. We're taped off just below that quarter inch sub deck and sanded to it. So we are all prepped up sanded after I went over the whole thing with 220. Then I took uh, the red scotch bright pads and I scuffed the lines again just to make sure because some of them had little shiny spots, meaning they are still slightly below the deck. But I think with this third and final coat on everything, it's going to turn out, it'll, it'll fill them enough that when it gets sanded and then cleared, they should be flush, I think. So we're all sanded up. Uh, every place where I put a screw, like here's for the step pads, uh, ran over the top of that. Again, when you put the screw in, it kind of pulls that wood up a little bit. So when I ran over it with that 220, that flushed everything up. So right here's my cleat holes. Right here is my uh, bow light with the wire holes in the center of it. So everything's flush, everything's sanded. It's all been wiped down with denatured alcohol. And uh, I'm getting ready to do the third and final coat, weather and humidity permitting, tomorrow morning. So that's where we are. All right. So here it is after the third and final coat. And it's, it's pretty glossy. You can see the reflection of this uh, two by four in the top here. It's not a perfect surface, but again, it's, it's smoother than the second coat, which was smoother than the first coat. And this is, this is plenty smooth enough, in my opinion, to, uh, to do the clear. We'll see how it turns out. This is still very, very wet. Um, I have peeled all of the tape off. Uh, for each sheet back. I peeled the tape off around the, the transom. I peeled the tape off the shears on both sides. So it is what it is. And it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's pretty smooth. So I think this is plenty good enough. Again, you can see the reflection here of the 2x4 and the flap for my entrance. So I think it's plenty good enough for clear coat. We'll see how it cures up. Um, today was borderline whether or not I should have epoxied it, but I ran heat in here. When I started, it was 40 degrees in my painter shanty. I uh, came out and I ran the heaters for about four hours in here, and I was able to bring it up to about 64 or so, something like that. Um, I put the epoxy on, started putting the epoxy on at 64. That was about 45 minutes ago, and, uh, it's now sitting at 68 and this is about as warm as it's going to get in here today but i should have no problem keeping it um you know upper 50s throughout the night i'm guessing which which ought to be plenty enough to get a good nice clear cure on it so there we are so while the last coat of epoxy is curing up i decided to drill my transom holes my transom motor well drain holes so take a look at that hole it is spaced a quarter inch off the side and a sixteenth off the bottom. They just turned out, I mean, it's, it's full of dust right now, but just damn near flawless. That's unsanded. I haven't even wiped the dust off it. I just finished drilling it. You see this, this scratch line up the side. That's part of my jig that I built. So then we'll come to the outside. There's a look at it right there. Again, unsanded, haven't done anything to it. That's just how it looked as soon as I finished drilling the hole. So this is a look at my jig right here. It's a piece of two by six. And I've cut the bottom of it down here to the same angle as the motor well, right? I then spaced up enough so that when I drill this hole straight perpendicular to the transom face, you don't want to drill it at the same angle as the bottom of the motor well. You want to drill straight through so that your your fitting sits flush out here on the, the back of the transom. So what I had to do is figure out what this distance was so that when I poke through this overall thickness, I came out 
a sixteenth above the bottom. So uh, we'll pull this jig off real quick, just loosen the clamp. Now it was important for me to support the back side. Number one, having you know a couple inches of depth here kept my paddle bit, one inch paddle bit, it kept that from walking around. It kept it dead center in all directions. So that, that was my pilot to get the hole drilled straight, get it started straight and into the transom. But I wanted to have this backer piece so that when that paddle bit started cutting out the back side, it had some support and it wouldn't tear out the back side of the material. Paddle bits are notorious for that. If you don't back your piece of wood, it'll tear it out. So uh, here it is. You can see where we've drilled into it just a little bit, but uh, this is all it is. I cut this notch in it deep enough to clear. So all the way down, there's still clearance underneath it. Did a little bit of math, a little bit of angles, and, and there it is. We'll slide this guy off, take a look at that hole. It's about a sixteenth off the bottom again and a quarter inch from the outside. Just effing perfect. I was really, really dreading drilling these holes. Again, here's a look at the outside. Unsanded. Just got a little bit of a little bit of dust on it. I was really dreading drilling these holes and was trying to come up with a method to do it. This little two by six jig just worked fan damn tastic. Pretty, pretty happy with that. So now I've got to epoxy encapsulate those holes, uh, slip my fittings through, cut my bulkheads off to the correct length, and then we'll uh, get them glued in there officially. So one more thing done. Pretty excited about it, and that's how I did it. Again, they just turned out really, really nice. Really happy with it. So we now have our stainless through holes installed. You can see we got one here and one over here. Um, I measured the overall thickness of the transom. I took those bulkheads to work. I chucked them up in the lathe and then I parted them so that when they were flush on the outside of the transom, there'd be about an eighth of an inch of that bulkhead protruding um, through the motor well. So I then encapsulated the inside of my holes, um, let that cure came back and sanded the inside of the hole smooth and then I applied a second encapsulation coat inside those holes but while it was wet I then took what was left over of my thin encapsulating epoxy and I mixed in some wood flour to thicken it up um, to about peanut butter consistency and then I coated all the way around those bulkhead threads um, the entire length of the threads coated in that thickened wood floured epoxy then I slid them back through, and they were they were pretty snug fit. So we had that thin epoxy uh, coating everywhere in the hole, two coats of that. Uh, but because it was still still wet, when I put the wood flowered thickened epoxy on the bulkheads and slipped them in, it's going to make a fantastic seal all the way around those. So uh, I chamfered, as you can see, I chamfered the inside edge of those stainless bulkheads to give it a nice funnel shape to aid in water. Uh, running out of them. They're nice and sealed up. Look pretty good. And then we'll come to the outside of the transom. And there they are. Nice and flush. Um, just look really, really good. There's the other one over there. Very, very happy with, with how they turned out. So uh, we now have our motor weld drains, our through hole fittings, permanently installed in the transom. So one less thing. Making good progress. So here's the third coat of epoxy, sanded with 220. Um, taped off again just below the subdeck level on both of the seat backs, just below the subdeck level all the way around the shear. Sanded the entire thing with 220. And then scotch brighted the seams again because there are a few of them that just showed a little tiny Bit specks here and there of shine meaning that those those shiny spots were just below the surface uh, so I hit all of those with scotch bright wiped it down a couple different times with some alcohol on the rag and here we sit but the better question is why why is it sanded why is it not in a paint booth right now 
So ignore the gigantic mess here. Uh, but what you're looking at, I built this flagstaff or mast or whatever you want to call it for my bow light on the tip of the the bow, the bicolored light, uh, three quarter inch at the bottom. So it'll, that staff will plug right into the top of my bow light and then I'll insert a couple of little uh, screw in eyelets, one here and you know somewhere one in here and I'll have my little pennant made for the bow. But I made a, a flagstaff or mast or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's about 14 inches tall overall. This started as a 7 8 by 7 8 scrap piece of African mahogany I had sitting around. And I just took it over to my disc sander and started basically sanding the square edges to get, you know, almost an octagon shape. And then I kept sanding those until it was basically a dowel. Uh, and then I started sanding this taper into it. So it's a, a gradual taper. The bottom inch and a half or so is three quarter basically and then from that point on up it's got a, a gradual taper uh, getting a little steeper up here by the tip and then I just shaped this little ball on the end of it and all of this was done all of it with my disc sander so I've got it here I've got the first coat of varnish I've got to rough it up second coat of varnish I'll probably do four or five coats on this just to get it glossy but I wanted a, a staff for the front I didn't want to buy one because they're kind of ridiculously expensive for what they are and uh, I wanted it to match anyhow, so I made it out of African mahogany. So again, ignore my gigantic mess, but check out the flagstaff. Pretty cool. So this is why we were sanded. Take a look at the gloss on this thing. It's like a mirror. The whole boat, just like a mirror. We'll come down closer. It's just super, super shiny. And this is dried, this is cured. But it's not clear coat, it's not automotive clear coat. This is varnish. For the first time in the boat build, I kind of I kind of went against what I had planned to do. Look at the gloss on this thing. Anyhow, I kind of went against what I had planned to do from day one. I was going to do automotive clear. I mean, that was my goal in the last video. I stated I had 100% decided, look at that gloss, 100% decided that I was going with automotive clear coat. Um, problem being, I went to several auto body shops in my hometown. I would say, 60%, maybe 70% of them were capable but not willing to clear coat the boat. And what I mean by that is, and this is just what I, I took from the conversations with them, was that they, they were certain they could do it. However, they were not willing to try it for fear of screwing it up. They did not want to deal with the liability if they messed something up because none of them have clear coated a boat or on top of epoxy. So yeah, they thought they could do it. However, they were not willing to assume the risk for the potential of screwing it up. So they just passed. They wouldn't even take the job. The few that were willing to do it wanted a ridiculous amount. I got quoted on the, the lowest quote I, I got to Automotive clear the boat was three thousand dollars. Three thousand to clear coat the boat. I mean, shit, it can't be five hundred dollars in material, you know. So I just politely said, "Well, thank you," and moved on. So, you know, there's no way I'm going to pay somebody three thousand dollars to clear this boat. Not going to happen. So I just defaulted to what I know. I know varnish and I know captain's varnish. This is the exact same varnish I used on the all of the floor planks, same varnish I used on the interior of the boat. It's captain's Z Spar 1015. Um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And just ultra, ultra high gloss. And right now, I mean, this thing's like a mirror. Uh, the, the light we're seeing here is actually muffled because of the bisqueen up here. But you can see the reflection, you know, the two by fours and reflection here of this two by four, just like a mirror, you know. But 
it'll get glossier than this even, you know. Uh, sand it. This is the very first coat of varnish. I'll do at the bare minimum three and possibly five. Um, again, because this this varnish has UV uh, filters in it, and in UV is what kills epoxy. So the more coats of varnish you put on this, the higher the UV filter, um, the longer lasting and safer the varnish is going to be. So bare minimum three coats on the surface of the deck, uh, potentially seven. Basically, at the end of the third coat, I'll see how smooth it is. Uh, if I'm not satisfied, I'll do a fourth and see how it looks. If I'm not satisfied, I'll do a fifth. Uh, but I would say bare minimum three. So I'll get the entire surface of the boat done. Uh, the same thing down to my uh, sub deck on the shear all the way around. And then I will mask off the shear up from the sub deck. And we'll do the sides. The sides of the boat and the transom in the same thing. At least three coats on it as well. So that's where we are. Uh, it's not, not what I wanted to do, but I'm very, again, very happy with the outcome. I cannot be disappointed in that. It's, it's like glass, and it's only going to get smoother. So slight change of plans. Every bit is beautiful. Well, disappointingly enough, I somehow missed taking, you know, a short clip of video of the first coat of varnish sanded so the very first coat that you just saw of varnish was sanded I sanded it with 320 grit went over the entire surface uh, I then came back in any light spots or shiny spots I hit with the red scotch bright just to take the shine off of them and then I applied a second coat of varnish so this is coat number two unfortunately I didn't have any video of the sanding process of coat number one but uh, Again, I, I watched the dew point like crazy, and yesterday after work was a, a last night was a good night to do varnish because it never the temperature never matched or dropped below the dew point. So I prepped everything up, wiped it down with a tack cloth the night before, and then yesterday after work, the first thing I did was wipe it down with a tack cloth again, and uh, roll and tip the varnish. So, uh, smoother than the first coat, and the first coat was like a mirror. You can, you can see the gloss on everything. It is, it looks really, really nice. So, we're making really good progress. Coat number two of varnish is done, and, uh, I did a little experimenting with this second coat. Um, just for the record, this stuff is right out of the can. I'm not doing anything strange again. I'm just running it through a, a strainer, um, right out of the can into my rolling tray. Nothing special. Um, what I wanted to test, however, was whether or not this stuff would harden up in lower temperatures. You know, epoxy doesn't like lower temperatures, um. But I, I wanted to experiment with this varnish a little bit and see if I could get away with not running the heaters. Um, so anyhow, here it is. Uh, this is 28 hours later, and it's it's completely cured. I'll let it, of course, I'll let it sit one more day before I do any sanding on it. But it's cured now, and that really surprised me because the temperatures dropped um, into the I would say mid. 30s last night we actually got some snow today which again another freak snowstorm that's a second one here in three weeks but yeah it, it this stuff com completely cured without any issue clear down into the 30s surprisingly enough when i was rolling and tipping this stuff on it was about 52 degrees so uh even at very very low temperatures this captain's varnish still has no issue curing a uh, curing absolutely crystal clear i mean just beautiful absolutely beautiful so temperature doesn't seem to affect this varnish as far as curing um humidity doesn't seem to affect this varnish as well it was 95 percent humidity uh last night so really high humidity and pretty low temperatures um really i think when it comes to this varnish all you got to watch out for is dew point Make sure that 
you know, you've got a solid 14 hours or so where the temperature doesn't drop below the dew point and you appear to be golden. And this stuff turned out absolutely beautiful. Look at the 2x4 over here. So that's where we are. Coat number two is on. Rinse and repeat. Let it cure another day or so. Sand the whole thing with 320. Knock down the shiny spots if there are with Scotch Bright. Roll and tip another coat. Making good progress. So here's a look at varnish coat number two. You can see the Uber high gloss. Uh, again, completely, completely cured. Um, halfway sanded. So this is varnish coat number two, half sanded. It takes roughly five hours per coat of varnish. Um, four hours in sanding it down and taping it off. And the, the large majority of that is in sanding. Again, I'm sanding the varnish coats between coats with 320. And uh, then I come back and I scotch bright any little shiny spots if there are. And, and uh, you know, clean it up. Put a tack rag on it. Get all of the dust off that I possibly can. And then put on the roll on the next coat. Which And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to roll on the coat. So it's right at five hours for every coat of varnish. So that includes sand time, prep time, you know, cleaning everything up, tack clothing and rolling on a coat. So that's where we are. Tomorrow night we'll get this half si uh, sanded up. And then I will get the inside of the cockpit and motor well and the outside of the shear line um, taped off and scuffed up to the tape mark. And then tack rag everything down and put on coat number three of the varnish. It is, it is such a damn shame to, uh, I mean, you can see the gloss and all of this out here. It's just like a freaking mirror. But it is such a shame to have to sand this to go from this to this. Ah! But it's got to be done. I mean, this is how you prep for the next coat. So it'll get better and better and better. All right. It's officially April 1st, 2018. For the month of March 2018, we went up 25 and 3 quarters hours, so decent hours in March. Um, we went up $178.50. That should have been about double that, but I still have yet to receive my windshield brackets that I ordered back in, uh, oh geez, when did I order those? February 8th. You know, I was quoted in February 8th when I ordered them, uh, four weeks. Uh, well, we're going on seven weeks and I still haven't seen my brackets so that's that's unfortunate I don't know why they haven't showed up but so I guess we'll see the the uh, windshield brackets you know accounted for out of next month's hopefully they show up but anyhow long story short of that 25 and three quarters hours uh, varnish we went up uh, we now have 77 hours in varnish we went up 15 and three quarters hours in the varnish uh, we went up miscellaneous. There was an hour on miscellaneous, so that brings us up to ten and a quarter on miscellaneous. Stainless, again, there was a, an hour in the stainless, uh, so that brings our stainless up to 43 hours. Um, epoxy, we went up five and a quarter hours into the epoxy coat up here, so that brings us up to 136 and three quarters hours into epoxy. So, uh, anyhow. That brings us up to totals. Totals into the boat. 25 and 3 quarters hours. That brings us up to 963 hours even. Uh, the $178.50, that brings us up to $10,476.40 invested in the zip. So real quick, uh, again, I'm using the same, sorry about the mess, Captain's. 1015. I did notice something though on this can. This is my old can. You can see it says Z-Spar up here. The new can does not say Z-Spar. However, it is Pettit brand, exact same brand. It is Captain's and it is 1015. So I can only assume the label changed, but it's the same stuff inside. Um, it looks the same, smells the same, applied the same, dries the same, uh, sand it the same. I can only assume it's the same. But uh, just a heads up on that. So we'll take a look and see where we're at. So here's where we're at. This is coat number three of varnish on the deck. 
and it is just absolutely beautiful. It came out smoother than the second coat, then that one came out smoother than the first. This thing is like glass. I am very, very happy with it. Just, you can see the gloss. Again, the, the lights are muffled because of the Bisqueen up above, but it is like a mirror. You can see my thermometer here reflecting up off the wall. It's, it's like a mirror. Very, very happy with it, very proud. Um, so I think we're gonna move on now. I've got three coats on here. That's the same amount of coats that I have on all the interior, on the dash, the carlings, the armrests, all the floorboards are three coats. Um, because we're running, running low on time to get this thing in the water, you know, a couple months left before summer starts. And, uh, and I wanna make sure that I've got everything varnished in at least three coats so I can hit the water and not feel bad about it. Um, I don't think with three coats over the top of the epoxy, I don't think I'll have to worry about any UV damage or anything like that. Uh, I may, who knows, maybe next winter pull it back apart and, and do a few more coats on it. Maybe not. Uh, we'll just see how it holds up, but I don't feel bad about running it with three coats. That's what everything else has on it. So what I'm gonna start now in this month, April, is we're gonna start doing from the shear line down to the white bootstripe. We're gonna do the sides and the transom. Um, just some, some numbers so everybody knows. On the epoxy, it took 12 ounces of epoxy to coat the deck, 12 ounces. On the varnish, it took slightly less than 10 ounces per coat. So the varnish is a little thinner, it stretches a little farther. So in a quart can, you can get three coats of varnish on the deck out of a quart can. Um, because the sides and the transom, there's, there's more surface area on the sides and transom than the deck, uh, I'm hoping that I can get uh, a coat in 15 to 16 ounces. Uh, and if that's possible, then I'll be able to get two coats of varnish per quart. Uh, meaning to get my three quarts or three coats, I'll have to go buy another quart, but or two more quarts, but anyhow, that's where I think I'm, I'm at anyhow. And, and I'll keep you updated as to how much varnish it took to coat the sides in the transom. Uh, we're making, making great progress. Um, we are knocking on the door of completion on this thing. And it, it just, it looks absolutely beautiful. You can see it. I, I wish this Bisqueen wasn't up so you could see the reflection of, of the rafters and everything around it, but really, really pretty everywhere. I still have to varnish the inside of the motor well, and I think what I'll do is, while I'm doing the sides and the transom, I'll also sand and do the motor well all, all together. Um, but that's where we are. We're making fantastic progress. It's just like a mirror. Look at that thing. So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, rate, and comment. And uh, we'll see you on the next update of Building the Zip.